Hi, my name is Steve Faulkner. Welcome to Real Magic Review. And today I will be reviewing Calculated Thoughts by Doug Diamond. But before we do this, can you please do three very important things for me? Please do this. Don't think, oh, I'll do it in a minute. Do it now. Actually, don't do the last one now. Do the like thing. Press subscribe. Hit the bell icon. This is going to be four things, isn't it? <laughs> I just realised. <laughs> but never mind. Uh, and do those three things now. Like, subscribe, hit the bell icon. There you go. Because I go live quite a lot now and you'll know when I'm going live, which would be lovely because there'll be more of us and it makes me feel a bit less lonely. Um, <laughs> oh, poor thing. And... Uh, and, and the uh, like and subscribe does genuinely make a, a massive difference. If people see I've got more subscribers and more people like the videos, they will send me more stuff to review and we can keep this thing going. And talking about keeping it going, the big thing, which I'd like to do after this, or even now if you want, is check out cardmagiccourse.com. That is my online card magic course. That is almost like the sponsor of this, but it's my thing. It's independently created and it's a huge online resource uh, for card magic. That's all the videos you're ever going to want and more added every month. Uh, course currently being built on the Royal Road to Carb Magic, the seminal book uh, which I'm building over weeks and weeks and weeks and probably even years with everything in it uh, and the live sessions every week and a course on how to practice and other theory and everything you're ever going to want. Right, I'll stop banging on about that now but please do take a look, that's what keeps the thing going. So I, when I first saw this was out, I got excited because a new magic book was coming out and it's a Vanishing Ink magic book and they're very supportive and they send me the magic books that they put out. And then Damien said to me, oh, it's great, it's massive. <laughs> All right, oh, great, 400 pages or whatever. How many exactly? Actually, I might as well tell you. 398, sorry about that. Um, and I went, great, sort of with a slight in, in trepidation. And, uh, and then... He said, and it's called Calculated Thoughts. <laughs> as soon as I heard that word calculated, I went, oh. So what I worry about when I'm reviewing a book is card magic books. Not just card magic books, but you know, I, I, I fear someone giving me a massive card magic book that's just like hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of card tricks. Uh, not that fear, because I love reading it, but it's going to be a very hard one to review. What I fear more than that is calculations and numbers and books of numbers. And I just kind of went, oh, it's all going to be mathematics, isn't it? And then I got the book, and I went, well, it's lovely, and this is designed by Andy Gladwin and Michal Kaczalek. Uh Sorry about the pronunciation if I got that wrong. Uh, Michal um, does a lot of these, these uh, designs uh, for a lot of magicians, actually, and there's a good reason for that. It's a beautiful book, uh, as are all vanishing books, really. Uh, and it is designed really, really nicely, everything about it. Um, but I opened it up. First, <laughs> first bit, magic squares, right? So you've got a lovely... Um, uh, intro by Ken Webber of Maximum Entertainment and Doug actually edited, was one of the main editors on Ken Webber's books, uh, Maximum Entertainment and Maximum Entertainment 2.0, which are stunning, stunning, stunning books. And Ken, years ago, he probably won't remember, uh, gave me permission to teach a lot of stuff out of Maximum Entertainment when I was teaching street performers on a thing called School of Busking from, from Mario Morris years, more at Morris, years ago. And... Um, and in here, he, he, you know, he, he talks about Ken being, um, sorry, he talks about Doug being being a great thinker and all that. And it's not one of these long draw, it's a really nice little concise uh, intro forward. And, uh, and and he does say that he's a, he's one of the true underground geniuses, which, as we all know, is a word that's banged around a lot, isn't it? Um, everybody's a genius these days and everything is genius. And I thought, OK, well... Stephen Hawkins a genius, but I don't know what he's on about either. So this, this could go very bad. And on the first, but first, but well, I liked actually what what made me feel slightly better was on the comments at the beginning. There's a little bit uh, by Doug talking about how he doesn't like using the word spectators and performer. He likes to he likes to see them as being participants and being involved in it. And then I kind of went, oh, well, I like that. Like, this isn't someone that just thinks about numbers. This is someone that um, thinks about the performance of it. So I thought, okay. Uh, but then Magic Squares, so I'm starting Magic Squares, I flip through quickly and just see loads of numbers and I'm like, this is going to be a very long couple of weeks, it's going to be a very long, drawn out couple of weeks and um, it's going to be not pleasant. But then, well, I feel on the first, the, the, the first thing I had to Google, this is, this is me, not, not Doug. I had to Google the uh, sequential positive integers when he's talking about a perfect Magic Square. Um, 
I didn't know what they were, and I didn't even know it was integers or integers. The Americans say integers, so I, was, I suppose that's right. Uh, so um, we're not on it off a good start. Page one, I have to start Googling words. But then things changed very, very quickly. So Doug goes into um, what a magic square is, why a magic square is, and why it can and can't be entertaining, and, and what creates a magic square. And I thought, this is exactly what I need with things like magic square. I need to have my hand taken and walked through a whole thing of not this isn't just a load of numbers you can do this is why it works and on how you can do it to make it and and how some are, are created through magical means to get that last number and some are just created and there's pure ones and all this kind of stuff and I come like well I, actually I'm really I'm learning something I'm really really learning something and I love books like that even with car tricks they go well this is what you know the first time I learned triumph for years I've talked about this many times that I didn't know how it worked and now I do it's kind of a different trick for me I can kind of feel a bit more secure within it and that's why I get scared about number stuff and and Doug does say I keep wanting to call him Ken, Ken Webber Doug, Doug does say in it that you know I'm, I'm going to make this easy to understand it's not as hard as, as you might think when he's talking about creating a, a perfect magic square or a, or a pure magic square meaning you just create it there's no trickery and I've had that said to me before. I've had, it's, it's like when someone that is a software developer tells you, oh, it's not difficult, what you want to do? And then they, they start talking to you in a completely different language. And I'm saying to them, I don't know what you're saying. It's not that you're not explaining it badly. It's just that you're, you're saying words I don't know what they mean. And that happens with numbers with me quite a lot. But he really lived up to that. I really understood it. You know, he, he starts off and goes into all the different ways. You know the bit where you reveal a magic square and you go, he goes this way and that way. Even at that, I get a bit confused. And, and by the way, I love The Grid by Richard Wiseman, but that's a magic square. You don't have to know about the numbers. Um, but I still get a bit sort of stuck when I go this way and I forget one of the ones that works and, and one of the, whether it's the, is it pan diagonals they're called or, you know, all that kind of stuff. But he goes through exactly what, the ones that you should mention and the extra ones that there may be and and all this kind of stuff but then he goes into the first routine in it the flash squared which is based on a um a roy johnson idea and this is where i got really interested because one of the big things about magic squares and this is by the way it's going to be quite a long review i'll probably split it into two halves the big thing about magic squares is that they can look very interesting a bit too academic and not very entertaining if in the wrong hands. Now, I think there is a natural rhythm to them that makes them entertaining. And, and people do you get that kind of building applause sometimes when you start doing it. But you've got to really think about it. But it, it can be still not very magical. And this first one, it makes it magical. And, and this, this idea that you can do some simple arithmetic, and I mean simple, I got it, I could do it. It doesn't get more simple than that. It takes me a bit of practice. But... I, I did kind of go through most of this book with pen and paper or cards in hand or SP cards in hand, all that kind of thing. I've really, really delved into this and, and kinesthetically played with the cards in my hands. I know you can't do it any other way than kinesthetically, but <laughs> you know what I mean. Um, you know, I, I, so there's a, the way you do this is you, you kind of, you do the numbers very quickly and th so it can't be anything but magic really it, it can't be massive unless you're an utter genius it is like boom and they're done and it's repeatable there's a bit of prep involved but this flash square is a repeatable magic square that is very very magical you can repeat it to like 36 six people different numbers at a time so so the, and it and it's got a principle in it that is very well known by magicians that again is used really really well uh, so in it you can be done with big numbers small numbers there are a couple of little constraints that are very easy to get hold of, but it's just brilliant. And he goes really into how to put it together, how to make it look good, the performance of it, what not to do. And, and I just, I was really in at that point. And I thought, right, I'm getting this. And then he goes into this um, foundation square. Now, a foundation square is where the audience give you four numbers and you, you've got a blank square and it's, you're starting to build up a square properly without the, the magic side of it. So you're kind of, you've got the, the four numbers and he tells you how to build it up from that. Again, really doable. The diagrams look like a nightmare, but once I read it, I could understand what they went and actually they weren't. They, you know, it's one of those books that if you flip through, you go, oh God. But then when you read it, you go, no, this is, this, I am, as I said, having my hand held and being taken through this. So I could really understand when, and then he gives you a, um, 
an idea of how to present this. So they give you four numbers, you do the four numbers, you create the magic square, and he gives you a presentation for that called Square School. And then you've got this fair and square idea, which is a proper magic square, as in I have a blank piece of paper, no magic. Um, oh, there's, a, there's the natal square as well, which is nice. Someone gives you their date of birth, and you make a magic square, and that could be, oh, we're gonna make, we're gonna create your magic, your l lucky number. So we'll add the date of birth together, there's your lucky number, and then it becomes a whole magic square, and then they keep that, which is a souvenir, which is always really, really nice. And then this fair and square, which is a proper, we're gonna build up a magic square from, from nothing. Uh, and again, he, the methodology, but also the why of this, and the how, and the, the why it works, and again, it's all quite doable. So when he said, it's not as hard as you may think, I did get to that end of that chapter, and went, it's really not, it's, it's a really, I can do this, it's going to take me practice, and I am, like I said, I'm doing a couple of online courses at the moment to make my mental arithmetic better, but even without that, I kind of looked at this and went, I'm getting the hang of this, which is a, a really difficult thing to do with me, I can't stress that enough. So if you are one of those people that are thinking, oh, magic squares, no, just, it's a really good place to start, you're going to really understand it. So, moving on. So I wanted to talk about in, in a bit more detail about the magic square chapter because it's kind of a good, that'll give you an idea of how the rest of the book goes. So I'm not, I'm, we'll be here all day if I do that much detail and go through every single bit of the book, but I'll just give you my highlights from the rest of it. And I have, like I said, I've spent, I've read this book cover to cover and spent a good chunk of time with it, with the things in hand and actually going through a lot of the routines. If you've never looked at stack decks or if it's very daunting for you to learn a mem deck where you you're memorizing where 52 cards are this is a really brilliant place to start and maybe finish and what i mean by that is it will give you a really good background of the different kind of stacks you know a cyclical sequential stack as opposed to just a, a memorized 52 deck and give you the pros and cons and why you do one over the other so it, it talks briefly about size stebbins and these these sequential stacks, meaning that you, you know, if you if you see a card, you know what card's going to be next by doing a simple uh, calculation. Now, you know, you, you could say that a, a new deck order is a sequential stack, but you couldn't spread that face up. It would look obviously very obvious. And so the idea is to find something that you can spread looks really legitimate, but you can work out what the next card is. Now, these have always scared me, these kind of stacks, because of the idea of doing any kind of calculation I'm under fire. But again, he talks you through it and he in a very non-patronizing way, gives you hints and tips of not only how to remember it, but also how to do the calculations. And that's what was great for me. It was like, I, you know, I, I can't just do da 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 you know, that plus that is that. I have to kind of get there somehow, and he teaches you how to get there. So he, his own Dow system, which is a sequential stack he takes you through, which is very, very simple. I could look at that and do it straight away. And then he's got his um, quick stack 3.0. And obviously that tells you that he's done two of these before. And just so you know, Doug has published quite a lot. So if you've, if you've looked at and he's got a kind of very underground following. I've looked on the Magic Cafe, not about this book, but about uh, people that follow his work. And it's very good that it isn't going to be so underground now because it's, it's something I wish I'd have come across a long time ago, just for that clarity and understanding. So his quick stack 3.0, he claims that you can learn quite quickly and you can learn where every card's going to be with a simple calculation so it's not just I need to know what's at number 33 it's okay give me the number 33 and I'll be able to work out where that card is and for me terrifying after reading this not at all it's remarkable <laughs> this stack by the end of the day and I spent a good half a day with this by the end of the day I could with a little bit of uh, get you to any card whether you gave me the number of that card in the stack so number 33 for instance or you gave me the card I'll be able to tell you where that card is but in, it takes into, he's got a thing hidden in plain sight, I think it's called, which is a system that you use in all these, these stacks, which is just so, so clever. Actually, the, I got that wrong. It's, it's the chapter is called Hiding a Sequence in Plain Sight. And the, the system he uses, he calls Mirror Pairs. That's what it was. Move along. And it really illustrates and demonstrates very clearly the depth of his thinking here. He's, he is, he's, I'm starting to think now when I'm reading this, that he is starting to live up to Ken Webber's thing of an underground genius. Now again, genius is a word that I kind of go, really? But this is some really clever stuff. And by the end of the day, I knew it. So I would really suggest if you've not looked at any stacks, have a look at this. And then he goes into the next chapter, which is card magic. And I always go about, do I need to learn more card magic? This is stuff, I, 
again, I'm not going to go through all of it, but there were some really nice things when you get three people on stage. All of them choose their own card and you can find out what the card is. When you're reading this stuff, you are fooled. You're going to say there must be something more to it. And of course there is what the performer's doing, but there isn't. You're, this is exactly what happened. A trick called Menologue, based on Bob Cassidy's monologue, which is a trick I love, which I used to do years ago. I haven't done for ages using diaries. And you need more than one diary to do the trick. Um, he takes it down into one diary. And there is a little bit of a, a, a concession, but not, nothing that would be noticed. And it's a really clean, streamlined version of something that would genuinely fool people. And they would have no chance in reverse engineering. In the way that I'm, I'm reading this, and I'm going, I still don't get how that works. And I set it up with a diary, did it, and it was like, it, it's amazing, it works. And again, it gives you all of the information you know, why it works, you know, you know give you some graphs and some kind of ideas and some exp um, examples, and you just kind of get it. And it's utter, it is, <laughs> I don't want to say the word, but it's genius. It's really excited reading it, genuinely. Uh, and then he's got this poker plate, which is, if you've seen my review of Luke Germain's hit, it's a 10-card poker deal. Luke, Luke did it with, a, um, with gimmick cards and, and this really fair thing of going, you, okay, here's two cards. There's 10 cards here. We're going to give me a shuffle. I'm going to know what they are, but I'm going to put two down. You're going to choose whether I take one or two or you take one or two. Or, you know, it's all, and they choose everyone. So you start by saying, I know what the cards are, but I'm not going to make any of the choices. And you beat them with a, with a flush um, in spades, I think it is, but you know, that's it, irrelevant every single time. And again, I'm going through this going, this is amazing. And, <laughs> so just, and these gimmick cards I've got, you know, it was brilliant. And, and then there's just pages and pages of telling you why it works and giving you, again, it's like, right, I can now do this and I can take these into different routines, this concept. And he actually does that later on.